Welcome, welcome, everyone. I am your host, Lex Black. You're tuning into my show, Midnight Arcade, as you can see there and you can see right here. This is episode 48 of my show. Wow, amazing. I just have to marvel at that. Every time, the closer we get to 50, the more incredible and the more crazy it gets to me. 50 episodes almost. Anyway, we're going to get into it, man. It's chapter, uh, excuse me. It's Boruto chapter 13, Two Blue Vortex. This one is called Prescience. <sighs> cover is fire got boruto on it last time we left off shit got real boruto and sarada teamed up konohamaru reluctantly went along showed that he could hang a little bit then boruto got sniped from jura from afar from that mean minute um renegon sniper eye uh, so we'll see what turns out here i saw some i saw some uh sneak previews as i always do when i try to avoid them and uh i saw, I saw some shit and uh we'll get to it uh but before i do anything else make sure you like like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified for whenever I drop that new heat. You heard, yes, sir. All right, now let's get into it. Covers fire. Here we go. That sniper eye. Oh man, so he's looking on from miles away. Jura is. Boruto's down. Jura missed the vitals, and he says, "You're an intriguing lad. I regret doing this, but farewell, Otsutsuki Boruto." Now I gotta stop you already. I apologize. Jura sees Boruto as a straight up threat, not even worth devouring because he's too dangerous. But he sees Kawaki as easy work. They're going for the path of least resistance. <laughs> so that tells you everything you need to know about the power difference and gap between Boruto and Kawaki at the moment. All right, let's read on. So he's gearing up to do another sniper shot and then Bug appears out of nowhere. And then he says, whoops, am I interrupting? Oh, Bug's name is Mamushi. What is it? Matsuri's back. Based on our investigation, it seems likely that Boruto has an accomplice. Then we see Boruto down trying to recover from the injury. Jura looks on and he says, I see. So that's his source of intel on the thorn soul bulb and such. And Mamushi says, hey, that thorn soul bulb you're holding, did Hidari get himself killed? Jura says, our foe is formidable. Let's retreat. We can't let Hidari's bulb rot. Hmm. So there's a shelf life for their bulb. Like a fruit or vegetable or something. Hmm, interesting. Then Jura looks back and he says, Otsutsuki Boruto, you are truly a lucky man. It's as if the heavens are decreeing that you remain alive. Perhaps this is some divine intervention. Boruto is blacking out and now he's remembering a flashback and he's got the Sasuke style hair and he's training. Okay. And then he says, he's still, he's gotta be still, he's gotta still be nearby. Find him. I guess these are the shinobis that are looking for Boruto. Boruto says, damn it. And one pops up behind him and says, I finally found you, Boruto. Boruto is shocked and it's a toad. And he's like, a toad? And the toad says, there's roughly 20 shinobi in the area. You're trapped, Boruto. And yet, you can't really kill innocent folk. And Boruto says, and who are you? And the toad says, relax, I'm no foe. If I were part of the search party, I'd have alerted them already without engaging you in small talk. Boruto looks on. Boruto says, all right, spill it. What's your motive? Toad says, let's get you out of here first. Touch the toad's back. So it's someone speaking through the toad. Because remember who we're speaking about here, who we're about to see. And uh, Boruto is a little bit unsure, but then he says, there isn't any time to waver. There isn't any time to waver. No matter where you end up, It'd still be better than here, right? Or are you scared of toads? It's like, got a little troll in there. Okay. Bro just says, ah, damn it. As soon as he touches the toad, he ends up in a lair summoning Jutsu, Kashi and Koji. So it's kind of like a reverse summoning. Okay. Ends up in the lair and he's a little bit surprised. Then he stands up and then he looks around and says, where are we? And Kashi and Koji says, near the land of wind, one of Orochimaru's abandoned bases. I've camouflaged the already inconspicuous entrance with Genjutsu. We won't be found that easily. And then Boruto looks on and then he says, by the way, that toad is a scientific ninja tool. He's structurally identical to a real toad, except man-made. I manipulate him remotely using my chakra. That was me you were talking to, not the toad itself or himself or it was like hmm who are you or who are you you seem to know me Kashin Koji takes off his mask and then he says, does this ring a bell? And then Boruto's like, that mask? No way. And he says, I'm Kashin Koji, an artificial creation brought into being by Sanzu Amado. Okay, let's stop for a second. Last time we saw Kashin Koji, he killed, killed Jigen, right? And then he fought Ishiki and then Ishiki kind of rocked his shit and half of his side got crushed by a pillar but here he has both arms and both legs and he looks perfectly healthy so he got some work done 
And I have a lingering suspicion that Orochimaru had something to do with it. And how cool is that? That the clone of one of Orochimaru's closest childhood friends sought his counsel, sought his shelter, even if maybe he didn't interact with Orochimaru. He had to have gotten a new arm from somewhere, okay? He had to have, somewhere it had to come from somewhere. So this, there's a lot of full circle in this. And then the other part of the full circle, there's a couple of interlocking circles, right? Because the clone of Jiraiya is a mentor of Naruto's son. That's a beautiful thing. Now, granted, the personalities are very different. They're starkly different from, from, from Naruto's perspective, excuse me, from Boruto's perspective and Kashin Koji's perspective. So the relationship dynamic is gonna be very different, much different, far less goofy, far more business oriented, far more serious, but nonetheless, still a beautiful thing to see a full circle moment come to fruition like that. Amazing, I love, love it. So let's read on. <clears throat> Boruto says, Kashin Koji, how could I forget? You're the one who killed Master Ao and tried to kill me and Master Konohamaru too. Kashin Koji looks on and then he says, can I verify just one thing? Have you been Uzumaki Boruto from the moment you were born up to now? And Boruto's like, huh? Kashin Koji says, yes or no, answer me straight. Boruto's like, and he's like, you know of it omnipotence kashin koji says omnipotence huh inside my head you are boruto ishiki's vessel who fled kara my perception is that amado and i helped you break out but i'm wrong no boruto looks on kashin koji continues i don't know a whole lot about the ability called omnipotence however i do have an appreciation of the results it brought about so the day you were chased from your village it appears everyone's memories related to you and kawaki did get flipped guys <laughs> oh man it's so cool being right it's so cool being right what have i been saying since two blue vortex has debuted its latest chapters what have i been saying that if there is enough doubt in a person's mind and they can put two and two together using that in tandem with their common sense they will be able to determine that there are very stark and very glaring inconsistencies with what their mind is perceiving doubt doubt mitsuki was showing doubt there's a bunch of other characters that i was speaking on that have been dealing with sowed seeds of doubt with what they're looking at and what they're seeing rightfully so and look at what happened sasuke too obviously and lo and behold, another smart per Amado Shikamaru. All these guys, very, very smart, very, very sharp. And they're looking at the situation and saying, wait, no, 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 this, this, no, this doesn't add up. This can't be it. And they are correct. The doubt is breaking through omnipotence. One way, maybe it's circumventing it. Maybe it's not officially breaking it through, but it's circumventing it in a way where it's allowing them to think and look back and reflect and say, no. No, 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 the same right. I knew that that's what's gonna happen. I, it's cool being right, or at least partially right. All right, let's read on. Boruto looks on, then he says, I don't understand. Clearly omnipotence affected your memory as well. So how are you able to grasp the actual state of things so objectively? Kashin says, because I know that the possibility of this would end up happening was high ahead of time. <laughs> okay. Boruto's like, what? Kashin Koji looks at the mask. And then he says, I owe you an apology. Even if it was to stop Ishiki, I still followed orders and fought all of you. For that, I am truly sorry. Wow, now this is something that we haven't seen from Kashin Koji. We've usually just seen the cold calculated operative of Kara. But this guy is showing depth, remorse. He's showing humility. Beautiful. Is that the Jiraiya cells kicking in? We'll find out. Let's see. Boruto looks on. And then he says, plus, I'm a shinobi too. I know the weight of a mission. No, no, he says, I'm a shinobi too. I'm a shinobi too. I know the weight of a mission. Plus, the frustration of not being able to vindicate oneself as someone who's experienced that for a while, for a long while now. Or Boruto saying that, I'm sorry guys, Boruto says that to Kashin Koji. Kashin Koji looks on, and then he says, as you already know, I was created by Amado in order to defeat Ishiki and consequently stop his planet destroying divine tree plan. His power far exceeded any of our imaginations, but I was satisfied because I had completed my duty the moment I managed to drag him out of Jigen. Boruto continues to look on. I had no fear nor any regrets. I could leave the rest to the Hokage. I just quietly awaited death. And then we see something happening here. What is this? So is this some sort of jutsu or is this part of the paneling? Let's see. But he's viewing or observing the fight between Naruto Sasuke and Ishiki, seeing the happenings of things. Okay. It happened suddenly, but as I watched various scenes flash by one another, I realized that these were glimpses of future realities. So maybe he had some contact with Ada? Let's find out. Oh, so he knew Jorah was coming. Am I correct in that assessment? Let me know in the comment section, guys. Ooh, 
There's some gangster shit going on here. Oh my God. So we have an, a, a new entry into the pack. We see Jura Hidari, uh, Mwegi's, or Matsuri, the bug equivalent. I can't remember the name. I don't feel like scrolling up to look for it. Let me know in the comments. Sorry, guys, I'm tired. Interesting. I wonder who this person is. Kashin Koji continues in this, and he says, I realized Ishiki's death wasn't enough. That until Ten Tails itself was destroyed. This planet would continue to be in danger. So there were still things that I needed to do. I couldn't afford to die here, Boruto looks on. Since then, by comparing what actually took place against the myriad visions I saw that day, I've deepened my understanding and conviction about this ability, Boruto looks on saying are you saying you knew omnipotence would flip me in kawaki's positions even before it started kashin koji says that's right although there are parts i'm confirming for the first time through this conversation since my perception is that kawaki has always been the hokage's son boruto says so what is this ability anyway and how did you come to have it all of a sudden i'm sure amados told you about otsutsuki shibai uh okay let's let's pause for a second here so what i'm gathering and guys help me out in the comment section okay please i implore you i love conversation with you guys if i'm right in my assessment kashin koji has some sort of similar historical viewing kind of threads of fate destiny viewing jutsu in maybe the same ballpark as ada if that's the case then that would make a lot of sense as to why he knows so much and then it makes you wonder about like who's the guy from the mountain top where they were in uh or on the cliffside when naruto and sasuke were fighting kaguya guys i temporarily forgot they were fighting her in the past who was that shaded figure far off in the distance on the cliffside was that kashin koji maybe maybe we were seeing just a memory of him being in that memory but not him actually being there you dig what i'm saying <laughs> i don't know anyway let's see Boruto looks on and says the Otsutsuki. Kashin Koji says the Otsutsuki who devoured countless planets long ago. All acquired all sorts of Shinjutsu and was even called a god. Otsutsuki Shibai. Each of us car members who were given enhanced modifications by Amado received transplants of Shibai's cells without fail. That might explain the ability to view the past or different destinies and different futures from Kashin Koji. Okay. In the hopes that we would manifest at least one of his many Shinjutsu, though whether we'd successfully gain any ability was a matter of luck. As a result, Code's claw marks, Damon can reflect all attacks, and Ada has her godlike abilities, but neither Boro, Delta, nor I demonstrated any Shinjutsu. When cornered by Ishiki, upon facing almost certain death, one abruptly emerged. The ability to see all possible futures. Prescience! Okay, so I'm not too far off. I, okay, all right, okay. Word. All possible futures, Boruto says. Kashin says, this may sound obvious to you, but our future isn't simply one straight path. Many narratives get snuffed out based on which branch of each multi-fort crossroad is taken. It's a battle royale between destinies so to speak <laughs> what word did i just use i promise y'all i did not read this chapter beforehand okay you're seeing me react to it as of time of recording i have not read any spoilers or anything i promise you interesting so then he says um take one fate we've already escaped if ishiki had killed the hokage he'd have resurrected in kawaki's body and planted the divine tree and planted a divine tree the planet would have perished Boruto was like what caution says that ended up not happening there was a sufficient likelihood that it would another example the day kawaki caused the hokage to disappear when the two of you quarreled kawaki had managed to kill you as well as uchiha sarada who tried to help in this case you and kawaki would never switch positions kawaki would go on to lose to a tremendously strong code and be devoured by ten tails and the divine tree would destroy the planet it is difficult to prove what i've seen especially the event that didn't occur. What I want you to understand is that our future has continuously been walking a dangerous tightrope for several years now. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. Basically what he's saying is the future is fluid and it can be influenced by the lightest of changes of wind in the winds of destiny, so to speak. Borto says, that's one crazy story, but I can't ignore the fact that you really get what happens thanks to ominent, omnipotence, despite how extraordinary it is. Caution code is looking on and then Boruto says, excuse me, I'd rather not believe that you really saw all futures, yet it sure seems to not be com com completely baseless bull either. I have to admit, Caution Koji says, that's fine. I'll take it. Thank you. Boruto says, one question. Things aren't going to happen a certain way no matter what. So seeing all sorts of futures, how is that useful? Caution Koji says, the biggest advantage is intel. Correct. For example, your life on the run, it could prevent you from 
ending up cornered like earlier. Goruto says, yeah, that would definitely be helpful. Let me pause right here. It just hit me. This is why Boruto has been talking the way he's been talking since he landed on Code's face with his foot on his head in the first scene, <laughs> in, in his first re entry into uh, to Blue Vortex. He has been given access to multiple futures by none other than Kashin Koji with his ability, Prescience. Okay, let's read on. Or, Kashin Koji continues, I could impart the present to you. Moves in Jutsu future you have mastered. Wouldn't that accelerate learning and optimize training? Boruto was like, whoa, that's super awesome. That's possible? Kashin Koji says, there's no timeline paradox. Since I'm only relaying what I saw, it's totally standard procedure for prescience. I'll also tell you how to rescue Sasuke Uchiha from his tree. <laughs> That's how he knew about the thorn soul bulb. Before I continue, I'm very curious. I wonder if Kashin Koji saw a future where Naruto is rescued. If he saw a future for where Sasuke is rescued, I don't see why. And if he could see all futures, I don't see why he wouldn't have a future that provides a way for Naruto, Naruto to be rescued. Let's read on and find out. Boruto is surprised by this. And then Kashin Koji says, but first I need you to understand the very worst future that's possible right now. Boruto says the very worst future. Kashin Koji says, Ten Tails will break free of Code's control and evolve in a new way. They will likely show up before us as multiple divine tree people who possess individual minds. It would be ideal to dispose of the Ten Tails root and branch before that, but the likelihood we succeed is the likelihood we succeed is low. In nearly all the futures I see, there are divine tree people, and most dangerous among them is their leader, Jura. Jura, Boruto asks. Kashin Koji says, Boruto, he is going to kill you. It's not an absolute thing, but many futures show it happening. And what follows is pretty similar. Kawaki gets devoured and our planet dies. Boruto is kind of shaken by this naturally. Kashin Koji continues, obviously this must not come to pass. We can't let this worst case scenario become a reality. As I mentioned earlier, there are infinite possible futures. And through you learning about this now, our future has already started to change one tick at a time that makes perfect sense like i said the threads of destiny have already altered it doesn't take much just a slight shift in the winds of destiny for things to change in a completely different alternate future to be the end result this is some trippy shit i like this broto looks on and then he says just know mr koji whether it's stopping divine tree the a divine tree plan or whatnot i'll never agree to any option that involves killing kawaki understand kashin koji looks on boruto says because knocking sense into my idiot bro and restoring the uzumaki household is my goal you are a fucking real one boruto you are a real one shout out to you and i have to say that because in the beginning when i started covering boruto extensively on my channel i was hating on dude i didn't like his character i didn't think he was worthy of carrying on the legacy of the great legendary god body naruto but he's shown he's earned his rep he's stepped up he's representing he's killing shit he's hard body i fucks with boruto i love it he's grown a lot he's gone through hell and he's earned his rep big facts boruto puts his headband on and then he says whatever the case the ten tails is in my way that much is clear so don't bother wasting your breath i'll do it finish off code and ten tails both Kashin Koji looks on. Now we're back to the present. Boruto, don't move, uh, Sumire says. Konohamaru checks on Sarada. The bone is fine, but damn it, I think the nerves are damaged. Sarada says, never mind me. Please triage Boruto. Himawari wakes up. Oh, Mr. Nishi. Himawari, you've come too. Does anything hurt at all? And Himawari says, she's injured, looking at Sarada. She runs over and she says, let me see. And then she uses her chakra and heals Sarada. Sarada's like, what? I'm healed. No way. Kawaki looks on. So Konohamaru was like, what the heck is going on, Himawari? And then Himawari says, since the injury wasn't that extensive, I think this will do it. Sumire says, Himawari helped Boruto too. Boruto, he came back. And of course, bitch ass Kawaki says, hold up Himawari, don't go near him. Himawari says, big bro. Sarada says, Kawaki, you. Kawaki says, don't misunderstand. I'll let her heal him. We just got to do something first. Right, Master Konohamaru? Sarada's like, huh? Konohamaru's like, yes, indeed. Can't miss this perfect opportunity. Master, what are you? Move aside, Sumire. Oh, hell nah. Oh, man. They give him, oh, man. All right, they're treating him. They're doing him greasy. Okay, don't worry. I'll be gentle. Amado's custom sealing jutsu cuffs. Now we can't use any type of jutsu. Sarada says, Master Konohamaru, don't. And then 
uh, Colonel Harmon says, don't complain, Sarada. It's a measure dictated by the law. We need the intel he possesses. Alert Lord Eighth. Kawaki searches and finds the toad. And Kawaki says, isn't this Kachun Koji's? And then, I don't know if he broke it or it puffed out of existence. Konamu says, what is that? Kawaki says, nah, it's nothing. Kachun Koji says, ah, what a bothersome turn of events. He's definitely in Orochimaru's lair. Okay, now Jura has the thorn soul bulb and he's examining it. Puts it into the cube and the trees come in and it's reforming Hidari. God dang. He's back. Well, Hidari, any problems? Who knows? I can't tell, he says. I see. Seems you know that you're Hidari. Good. Your identity appears to be strong and intact. Jura, Matsuri says. Isn't it time? You know, for that. I'm chomping at the bit to see what's gonna emerge. Fine. Harvest it, Jura says. Matsuri harvests it and puts it on the cube. Jura says, now, what to name you to be continued? So I wonder what what source what's the source of this thorn soul bulb we will find out in the next episode or the next chapter it's getting good getting trippy talking about crossing destinies new paths new futures seeing multiple futures sorry guys seeing multiple futures it's getting crazy guys it's getting really 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 intense it's getting really 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 serious so I'm I'm very very excited to see what the events unfold. And uh this was a good chapter. This was a very 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 good chapter. Very good chapter, man. This is getting really really crazy. This is getting really huh. I'm excited. Anyway, one more thing. I've been curious and I've been thinking about some new formats for the show. And I'm curious to know what you guys would want to see from me. Would you guys want to see more more reactions like this? Or would you want to see more video essays on certain subjects within the Naruto verse or another manga? If you want to see me cover another manga or another anime, you guys recommend some things for me to dive into, man. I'm very, very curious to hear what you think about, hear what you think. And um, I'd be ha more than happy to dive into some new stuff that you guys might suggest to me um, and adding some new formatting to the show, uh, you know, so let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified for whenever I drop that new heat you heard. Yes, sir. Thank you for tuning into my show until next time. Midnight Arcade episode 49. This is Midnight Arcade episode 48 and we are gone.